Responsive lighting is a great project to build using very few DIY electronic components. In this video, we'll go over the steps for building a volume unit meter using an ESP32 and a WS2812B array of LEDs. I'll show you both the hardware assembly as well as the software that is needed for completing the project. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They're currently offering a wide variety of deals for the holiday season and the spring festival. Make sure to check out their coupons so that you can save while placing your PCB manufacturing and assembly orders with PCB Way. They were kind enough to send me a care package for the holiday season. As always, I was impressed with the high quality of their boards. One thing that sets PCB Way apart is that they're not a broker. Rather, they're a PCB manufacturing and assembly house. With friendly staff and great facilities, I highly recommend PCB Way for your PCB manufacturing and assembly needs. For this project I'll be using an ESP32 mounted on a Wemos from Factor development board. I'll use a 1x2 base shield so that I can assemble everything together. I'll also use a Wemos proto shield to connect the LEDs to the ESP32. Lastly I'll be using a Max 9614 electric microphone on a breakout board. I'll use some pin headers for the connections and as usual you can find all of these components on my little Amazon shop. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. The assembly process is very straightforward. You're more than welcome to follow along but if you already know how to do this feel free to skip ahead on the video. With the hardware assembled, we can now move to the software side of things. I'll create a new sketch so that I can test out the functionality of the microphone. I will name it ADC underscore test. I'll define a couple of parameters to store both the pin number and the value that I get from reading the pin. Then I'll initialize serial communication, read the value and print it to the serial monitor. I'll go ahead and connect the ESP32 development board to the USB port of my computer. Then I'll use the tools menu of the Arduino IDE to select the correct board and port for this project. 
Once I've uploaded the code, there is a very simple test I can run. I can connect the power and ground signals to the data signal and look at the measurements in the zero monitor. If everything looks good, I'll open a new sketch, save it as ESP32 VU meter, and use the tools menu to install the libraries that we're going to need. Those are the fast LED library for controlling the WS2812Bs and the Meguno Link library for filtering the microphone signal. With the libraries installed, it's time to work on our sketch. I'll start by including them, then defining some parameters that we'll need throughout the code like the number of pixels, the microphone pin, the LED pin. Please note that you'll need the actual GPIO number as opposed to the label on the board. Also note that some of these parameters are specific to the audio levels I'm getting. If you're following along, feel free to tweak them in order to get a similar response according to your setup. I'll also need to define an LED array for controlling the pixels and instantiate an exponential filter for applying it to the microphone signal. In the setup function, I'll initialize the serial communication as well as a fast LED built-in object. Then in the loop function, I'll read in the microphone signal get rid of some of the noise levels that I'm getting, and apply the exponential filter for further smoothing of the signal. I'll send out the limited signal as well as a smooth version over serial, which allows me to use the serial plotter to visualize the signals and determine if further tweaking is needed. If the filter signal looks good, we can move on with the rest of the code. The next step is to convert the amplitudes into a scale that we can display using the 16 LEDs. For testing purposes, let's just set the LEDs to a single color. And once we've made those changes, let's go ahead and upload the code and test things out with just some sample noise. With those tests looking good, we can change how the levels are displayed. I'll use a user-defined function so that instead of a single color, we display a variety of colors from green to blue. And with those changes in place, it's now time to test out the system. So there you have it, we've gone step by step over the process of building a volume unit meter using an ESP32. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two that really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.